Uh, today we wanted to wrap up Rooted in kind of a different way. You've heard enough from me. Uh, we wanted to take some time to hear from the, the stories that God has been writing and building and, and leading out in all of you. And so I know as we've talked to different ones, so many of you have had experiences over these last weeks that have been powerful where God's done something cool. And uh, we asked these guys to kind of be representative of that. So th- these seven are going to tell their stories. They all kind of have a unique perspective. And I think it'll speak to you because I think you'll resonate with a lot of the different ones here and what they've gone through. Now, I don't know how you feel. You may, you may cherish the idea of being up in front of a bunch of scary looking people and talking and telling your story and being vulnerable and all that stuff. But most of these people would disagree with you if that's right. Would you do me a favor and just let them know how much you appreciate them up front so they can kind of take a deep breath and absolutely, absolutely. So we're just going to kind of go down the list and let them tell their story and uh, give, give their examples of what God's doing in their life. And uh, so we're excited about that. Jack and Kathy Smith are here in the end. Jack and Kathy and I have been friends for a long, long time. Uh, long before they ever started coming to the church, I was friends with their grandkids. And so that made me friends with them. And uh, so we've known each other a while, but then they've been at Wellspring for a while and been, and been you know, continuing to grow and follow their faith. And uh, Jack, you in Rooted were telling me just a few weeks ago how you really felt convicted to be, to be immersed, to be baptized, and you felt like God was putting that on your heart. And so I wanted you to have a chance to tell them about that, about that situation. Okay. My story really began many, many years earlier. Uh, I was born, baptized, sprinkled. And uh, following that, it was in junior high, and we took two uh, years to uh, then be confirmed in the church. But having it happen in junior high, I mean, I had other things on my mind, like sports and girls. So, I mean, not much of it registered with me. But when Rooted was presented, I sat there and and I looked at it and I thought, this is for me. Uh, I'm looking for answers. I feel something was missing in my life. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And so one day uh, I was doing my daily exercise and and, uh, uh, at the end of that exercise it was to write a prayer. And I sat there and just a total blank on my face. I I couldn't think. And all of a sudden, kabam, there was baptized in front of me. And I went, where did that come from? I mean, for crying out loud, I'm 77 years old. And that wasn't on my to-do list or my my bucket list. (laughs) You know, that wasn't there. So I went and, and uh, thought about it for a while, and, and I decided to go to Andy and talk to him. And we talked, and, and I didn't have any details worked out, but uh, I, I wanted at the beginning to sit there and be first. I wanted to go first because I felt that I had a journey longer than my wife. And we went home and we talked, and, and I, I was kind of, you know, that just didn't quite feel right. And I felt a nudge to, hey, look at something else here. And so we talked. We talked about, well, maybe we do it with our, our rooted group. Uh, maybe we turn around and do it with our friends. Uh, maybe we turn around and, and do it with our Bible study groups. And none of that felt right. And all of a sudden, there it was right in front of me. There was my wife, 55 years. We had been through everything. So the question was, why weren't we doing this together? So we decided that we're going to do it together. And then we had it scheduled. And so what happened was, is I caught COVID-19, and that derailed us for a while. And so I got over that. We got over our quarantine, and then we rescheduled. And so we came in that day, and, and I was more excited than anything else. Uh, I didn't know that I was going to find exactly what I was looking for, but I knew that this was definitely a step in the right direction. So coming out of that water, I never felt so refreshed and innocent and clean. And I turned around, and and when I went and and, uh, hugged Andy, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders at that point. And I knew that was Jesus taking my sins away from me. I was ecstatic. Also, I said, well, it's, it's time for, for celebration. Because not only have I just reunited with Christ, 
but I have found what I've been missing for my whole life. And that was Jesus and for my sins. So just closing, I just want to say thank you, God, for not forgetting me and keeping after me. That's right. Yeah, that was powerful to be able to walk through that with them together as they decided to, to be immersed. And so we're just grateful. It's just an honor for me to be a part of that. And we had this great picture of Kathy. I think we're going to put that up on the screen, uh, which I didn't notice until, you know, the, the people always like on the romantic movies, they always talk about the, the best picture is when the br bride comes in and everybody looks back at her and to look at the groom because his face looking at her. Or, I hadn't noticed until just like two minutes ago, Jack's face at this point, like that's a, no offense, Kathy, but that's about as good as your pose there. And, and on the video, she actually let out a whoop, which is kind of fun. And uh, so, Kathy, just tell us about that moment and what, what your experience was. Okay, thank you, Andy. And dear husband, we've been married 57 years. <laughs> <laughs> he got it right in the first service. But, but I do know the date. Know Jack, the date. Jack, you give hope for all of us. Hope to every one of us. Absolutely. We're all together. I'm Kathy Smith, but my, my favorite name is Mrs. Jack Smith. Mm -hmm. So, um, Andy, I, I need to back up a little, back, a little <laughs> bit from that picture there because it, this was a journey for me. It started, I was sprinkled. I made an altar call when I was a young teenager, and I was saved, and I know the Holy Spirit dwells in my heart. He nudges me every once in a while, not too gently. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't feel the need to be baptized again. I just, it, Jack was ready, I was kicking, you know? So in the Rooted Group, after five or six weeks of listening to the faith stories that they told, and, and all the encouragement they provided, and, and the, the, the push, really, you need to get this done, Kathy. You will be glad. But the final, final thing was Janice Haley. She's a charter member of Wellspring. She looked at me and she said, Kathy, John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ. You need to do this and do it now. So I thank her for that. I thank Aruta Group for all of their support in this decision. And coming out of the bas baptismal waters, it was just amazing feeling the guilt washed away. The shame for the things that I have done washed away. The fear of the future washed away, totally clean. And I turned around and I looked at my husband and the look on his face, and I went, <laughs> Baptism is an incredible part of my faith journey, and I thank you for listening. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So again, we tried to get different kind of different perspectives, and so Gina and Dave Strobel uh, have not been around Wellspring a long, long time, and so this is the first time they led a group. And as anybody would lead a group, it's, there's some nerves that go along with doing that here for the first time, opening your home, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanted you to be able to, to share your experience as a group leader. Thanks, Andy. Um, so when we got gently prodded, I mean nudged by Scott <laughs> to lead a growth group or a, uh, a rooted group this time, it was... Um, I was a little bit nervous because number one, we're new to the church. We don't know a lot of people. So is anybody going to show up to my house? Like, hey, come on over. I'm a stranger. Like, I wasn't quite sure about that. And then I wasn't sure if, because we were going to do dinner every night, as you can see behind us. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make the right meals and for everybody. And if they had like any kind of unique um, food dietary restrictions or anything, I wasn't sure how I was going to cook for that. I wasn't sure how I was going to clean or if my kids were going to be well behaved that night. Um, I'm sure you guys are better parents than I am, but sometimes my kids have uh, meltdowns. Um, but so the first week we were really, you know, anxious about it, how it was going to work out. And the first week we had one person. 
Um, and my husband and I had talked all week and said, you know what, if no one else shows up this week, then we're just gonna stop and that's gonna be it. Well, spoiler alert, that didn't happen. And um, emails and texts started rolling in. And my husband and I like to call it the mystery dinner night because we had a group of people and we had no idea who they were other than their names. And when everybody came and introduced themselves at my front door, it was, um, it was really refreshing because it was a big mix of people. And like, we really didn't have much in common. We had people who were single, people who were divorced, people who were married. We had people from the age range of 20 to 70s, so a very big lifespan there. And um, we didn't have like all the natural things, like my kids don't play sports, some of the other people's kids did. And we just all got along really well. We all gelled together and we really loved being together. It was just the best part of my entire week to be with my growth group. It was energizing for me. I never felt anxious or overwhelmed or like, oh no, Ruth is coming again. They're all going to be at my house. And even if my house wasn't immaculately clean, none of them cared. They were all there to be together. And about week seven, one of them opened up their book and said, I just did the count and we only have three weeks left. What's next? And that was kind of how I was feeling as well. It's like, I don't want to stop this. Like, I don't want to not be with these people. And so we've been talking about next steps of January and where we go on from there. But I think it's the best part for me was just getting to meet more people and feeling like I had a family here and I had a community. And that was it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Lindsay Reynolds, or Mrs. Reynolds, Miss Reynolds, as a lot of uh, school kids would, might know her, a uh, teacher here in Spring Hill for a while, and she's been part of Wellspring for seven months, and she's been in our rooted group the last several weeks, and so, Lindsay, being relatively new uh, to Wellspring and things, why don't you tell us your experience of being in not only just a group, but rooted, and how that worked for you? Um, just many, many moving parts to get to this moment today. Um, I am perfectly imperfect and make mistakes all the time. And uh, the moment I walked into Wellspring, it just, um, it just felt right. No other words to describe it. Felt like home. Um, and I knew that I hungered for more, wanted more, and so just kind of pushed myself out of my comfort zone and um, joined a life group. And I think two of the biggest things um, that I really see or saw God in or working through was just providing fellowship and consistency. I think those things are, are key when you're starting a new journey or you're wanting to learn something new. And so just having somebody to, having a group to give me accountability and check up on me or send a text and say, hey, are you going to be there Tuesday? Um, all of those things matter. And I think they're so pivotal. And um, so this, this journey definitely has been transformative. Um, 10 weeks ago, I was um, scared. I was afraid. Um, I uh, felt maybe more like a stranger to a group. But now on the other side of that, um, and now I just, I hunger for more. I've been baptized. I um, continue to just walk in my journey with the Lord. And I'm so grateful and so blessed for that. So I just, I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, for sure. That's right. I think, I think one of the common threads you're going to hear, when we didn't plan this out, you're just going to hear it, is each of these people, like they stepped out of a comfortable area, comfort zone, and then God honored that. And that, that, that was a different example for each, but, but all of them, can, and that's true for all of us. When we, when we want to grow, we got to step out kind of that spot. Uh, so John's kind of on the other end. Lindsay's, I think, our newest person on the panel to the church. Uh, John's been around for a long, long time, 15 plus years, uh, was back with us in the school and all of that. And, and even though John's been around the church a long time, he struggled with a lot of doubts and uncertainties and questions. A um, couple weeks ago, he came up to me in the back at the end of service and said, I, I want to get baptized. I want to do that right now. And I told first hour when somebody John's size says he wants something right now, you say, yes, sir, and you do whatever it is. Uh, so we told Keith, uh, we said, hey, tell the church what's happening. And I think Keith came in and said, there's a large man in the lobby, take a seat. And everyone thought there's a terrorist or something. I don't know what happened with that. But uh, I wanted John to be able to tell his story about some of the doubts and such he had and then how he's worked through those. Thanks, Andy. So, yeah, uh, my wife and I both uh, started attending 
like Andy said, about 15 years ago, uh, we were at the uh, Spring Hill Elementary School when we were there and having the joys with setting up chairs and tearing them down all the time. But uh, background-wise, I've I got a technical background and, and uh, education too. All, all along them lines, I was taught more um, evolution than creation, so I kind of had that mindset. And um, so it just seemed right. But then the more you started thinking about it, or I, th I started thinking about it, things just didn't evolve. Something had to set all this in motion, had to start beginning it. And, you know, basically, that something's our God. That's the only way I could see it happening. So, you know, so, so my mind shifted and changed in, into that, uh, that realm. I, I, I can see God's works and, you know, in nature and, and the way our, fam our people around me are living our lives between my wife, my children, our life group, Andy's sermons occasionally. But, <laughs> um, rare occasion, a, rare occasion. Yeah, it's more right. common than you realize, <laughs> hopefully for everyone. Um, so, you know, I've decided... Well, with seeing that, you know, with some of the reasons leaning toward getting baptized and the Holy Spirit, Spirit nudging us, kind of with them gentle things, but also had a little more of a more direct nudge or prod, as I heard earlier in this, and uh, it came to it came to me in the form of a dream. And uh, family was believing an uh, unnamed big box store. I don't know if it was Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatever. But as we were walking out, going into the parking lot, those that know, I have two children, and both of them said, look, there's Jesus, like he came back. And so a dream progresses, and all of a sudden I realize out of the, my whole family, I'm the only one that couldn't see him. Uh, that's pretty concerning. <laughs> so so um, good motivation there. So, yeah, it was, it was time, uh, you know, to to get baptized, and uh, so I felt like it was just a duty of being uh, obedient to it. Also helps ensure that uh, I'll get to meet Jesus in heaven, or at Walmart if he decides to come back early. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever it takes, for sure. I, I have seen a lot of things at Walmart. I don't know if, but I've seen a lot of things at Walmart for sure. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, next up is Michelle. I think one of the things about this panel that you're noticing is Rooted has helped make a lot of connections. And some of those connections are to God or to faith or to different things. Uh, but it also has connections to one another. And that's a common thread through all these guys as well. And Michelle actually, through her Rooted experience, met somebody who's been real, a powerful picture in her life. And I want her to be able to tell you about that. Hello. <laughs> um, so in, in my experience this season, I decided to do Rooted via Zoom. Um, I had some surgical plans that I had to attend to and where I was going to have to be off my feet. So I decided Zoom was the best option for me. And um, I knew Keith and I knew Don in, in the group. So I decided, okay, I know two people. I'll do this. And um, we proceeded to go on with Rooted and I could see everybody's face. And we would give our testimonies, and one day, um, Tracy gave her testimony. And she started to speak about her experience in her life with her disability. And she started to share about her struggles. And at that moment, I started sobbing and thinking about my daughter and her struggles and the parallels between the two of them. And it just hit me, and I, I put myself on mute because <laughs> I don't want to hear me cry. Um, but it was just really impactful for me to hear an adult woman with similarities to my daughter because I, I'd only met other children and not in, not in a personal way. It, it's with their parents and we're all a little protective of our kids when we're going to and from therapy and to and from school. It's very automatic. So we had gotten to intimately get to know each other through our testimonies and through 
learning more about Christ. So um, at that time, we were wrapping things up, and my daughter came into the screen because, as God would have it, she was homesick that day. And Keith said, who's this? And I said, this is my daughter Zoe, and she has cerebral palsy. And he said, tell us more about that. And Tracy said, I have cerebral palsy too. That's my diagnosis. And it was just a really sweet moment because the three of us had something very deep in common. And you're not supposed to be happy when someone's struggling with something, but um, we were happy to be struggling through it together, to not be alone in that moment. It just felt very unifying and very whole, and it felt very kind of God to give us that opportunity to know each other. And as it turns out, Tracy is a mother, and she has two beautiful daughters. She's married, and a lot of her dreams have come true, and my daughter has shared these dreams with me that she has, and oftentimes I struggle, because when she tells me about her dreams, secretly I feel afraid that they won't come true. And then God gave me Tracy to give me hope that they will come true. And I'm really grateful for Tracy. And I'm really grateful to God. And I'm very excited for my daughter's future. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you were wondering about the, the quotable line of the day, that was it. It's, you don't want anybody to struggle, but it's, it's really blessed to struggle together. And I think that's the experience a lot of us have had. Um, and sometimes it's really good to have somebody support you when you're struggling. And sometimes it's really good to be the one supporting. And I think, Tracy, that's your version. So we wanted you to be able to tell your, your side too, because you were able to come as the supporter and the powerful way that that impacts us on that side too. Tell, why don't you tell us your story? Well, we are, we are going to end up supporting each other, I can tell. But I chose to do a, a Zoom group because because of my own physical disability as I can't drive and my husband has a very weird work schedule so Zoom just worked out really well and I literally picked it because Keith taught it. He was the only one I I'm like, okay. And I feel like God brought us together in that group because I wanted I had a prayer and I wanted somebody that I can make a positive impact on and God is allowing me to do that with Michelle, Zoe, and the rest of their family, and I hope that I will always be a positive impact for them. And I don't think we were brought into this rooted group by coincidence or accident. God did it for a reason, and as of right now, we don't know all the reason for that, but he does, and he will reveal it to us. Yeah, for sure. 